Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday morning church service. We pray that you're going to join us in worship, worshiping, worshiping our King. So this morning, or this week, I've been thinking about all those people in isolation and how we're being, um, you know, suggested by the government that we keep one and a half metres from everyone and we, we've got to isolate and it just feels so lonely, doesn't it? I don't know about you, but I've been feeling lonely. But the whole thing is, it doesn't matter how, how much they isolate you, whether it's just two of you in a motel room or two of you with your kids in a motel room, Daniel, you're not in there alone. There's another one in there with you. And someone out there needs to hear that this morning. You're not in this alone. God's in there with you. It's like Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego. They went into that fire alone, but they weren't. Jesus was in there with them. And I want to encourage you this morning. There's another going through this with you. Amen. Church, sing it loud. I no longer say to be. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me.
just declare it I'm no longer Amen. We're going to come around the table of communion now. So prayerfully you've got your communion ready and you're sitting around with your family. It doesn't really matter, a piece of bread and some juice. Whatever you've got, it doesn't matter. Isn't it awesome to know that we're not going through this alone? And you know, one of the things that, um, that I love about this this um, story is written about um, the account of Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego and they're in the fire and they go in because they believe that they won't bow down to anyone else and they were threatened and they still wouldn't bow down and they were, they were tied their arms and their feet were tied and they were thrown in the fire and the amazing thing was that they went in bound nothing else was burnt but whatever bound them was taken away. And my prayer for you this morning is whatever has been holding you back, whatever's been binding you up during this period of time, that during this time of worship, that God will take those things away and you'll be able to worship in freedom this morning. Amen? I'm sure I heard an amen out there. So just quickly, if we go to Psalm 31, and I'm just going to read from verses 19 and 20 this morning. I'll just give you a quick second to, to get it. Psalm 31, verse 19 to 20. Sing out when you've got it. I'm going to start reading. It goes like this. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you. Do you understand that this morning, church? He's only got good things for you, and not just a few, but they're abundant. If you fear him this morning, if you love him, if you revere him this morning, he's got those things for you. That you bestow in the sight of all, he doesn't hold back, on those who take refuge in you. And this morning, Lord, we take refuge in you. We understand we're not alone because you're there with us. Verse 20 goes on to say, In the shelter of your presence you hide them. O oh Lord, we thank you for the shelter of your presence this morning. You hide them from all human intrigues. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. This morning, church, I want to encourage you. In his presence, 
there is safety. In his presence, there is freedom. He, he set you free. Don't let the things that are going on in our world, don't let that fear bind you up again. You've been set free. Don't let sin bind you up again because you've been set free. In his presence. Isn't it so good to be in his presence this morning? We thank you, Lord. Why don't you eat and drink? Why don't you just pr- take a, a moment to pray with your family? And if you're by yourself, just pray and a prayer of thanksgiving to God this morning. Thank him that you're not alone. Thank him that he set you free. Thank you that he's got abundant things for you, abundant gifts, abundant life, and he holds it back from no one. We thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you as you eat and as you drink. Thank you, Lord. So during the week, I've, I've also noticed, isn't it good that we're going on to the first stage of freedom? And everyone seems to, it's like the burden's lifted off people. You go to the shops and there's people everywhere. You, go to, you can go to cafes now and people are actually sitting down and eat, eating. And that's fantastic. People have this sense of, things lifting but one of the things I've noticed in the week this week since it was announced in the papers it's like hang on don't get ahead of yourself don't get ahead of yourself well why not well they're trying to put this fear of us fear into us again look out for the second wave look out for the second wave look out this might come back Worse than the first. Listen, you can say what you want, but we will not fear. Come on, church, we will not fear because we are not slaves to fear. Amen? We are not slaves to, slaves to fear. We will, not, we will not listen to those words, but we will only listen to the words that come from your mouth, O oh God. And we thank you this morning that we can... We can stand in freedom we can stand without fear because of what you've done for us lord you know you don't give us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind and this morning as we sing this we're gonna we're gonna declare it into the heavenlies we're no longer slaves to fear but we are your children and you would only have good things for us so we need not fear Thank you, Lord, this morning that we are your children. We are sons and daughters adopted into your family. And we can stand with surety. We can stand strong knowing that you will protect us. You will keep us safe. We need not fear. We need not worry. Because you are with us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. Thank you, church, so much for being with us this morning. I hope you really enjoy the word that we've got for you. God bless you, and have a great day. Good morning, church. Hope you've been keeping well. I would just like to bring you some announcements this morning. And first of all, Century Corner Cafe, which is our church cafe, is about to reopen again. So here's a short clip about that.
So the Century Corner Cafe and the gift shop will be open on Tuesday the 19th of May from 10 till 2. And it's only for takeaways at this stage and that's all really exciting and if you're in there and if you have some time um, to spare and if you'd like to volunteer for anything, um, speak to Bob. We are still looking for some volunteers. If you can volunteer some time with the Century Corner Cafe, that will be amazing. Thank you. So church, in a few weeks' time, we have some very exciting news. We have Pastor Paul and Lorraine Newsham as guest preachers coming here. So that is going to be really exciting. Looking forward to being there with you guys. It's all online, so I hope to see you there. Church, I would just like to thank you for your giving. And you guys have been so generous in your givings, and we like to thank you for that. And if you haven't been able to give, we have some... Um, things on the screen up right now of how you can give and where you can give. And I would just like to uh, read this verse out to you guys. It's from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your own heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or, or respond to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And that's an encouragement for you guys and an encouragement for me, is to always give cheerfully. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hi. It's so lovely of you to join us today at uh, New Life at Church Online. And we're so glad you're part of our, our gathering today because we've got something really um, wonderful we want to just chat to you about. I want to talk to you this morning about the miracle of the moment. The miracle of the moment. And right now, every one of us are in a moment where we might be going, I'm worn out by worry, I'm, I'm lost in confusion of what to do, I'm not sure about my future, etc., etc. What are you doing right now in this moment of time? As Ray was saying before in his leading, we can let all kinds of voices of fear and anxiety and worry, etc., you know, tell us what to think, or we can actually begin to understand that God wants to speak in our life faith and cause us to understand there is a miracle in the moment for us if we discover who he is. Maybe as you look back over your life, I bet there were moments in your past when you, th you, you can think to yourself, I wish if I had that moment again, I would do things differently. If I had that moment again, I would make better decisions. There are th so many things in the moments of life that actually become critical things, aren't there? They become pivotal to what comes next for us in life. I very, feel very strongly to talk about this today because right now, I think what, where we are as a nation right now is one of those moments where everything can get, become right or everything can become wrong. You know, and I want to say this, that I do believe that um, for so long, it's Jesus has taken backstage to our whole culture and our nation because we don't want Jesus up on the front stage messing up our lives, messing up what we want to do. We've put him in the backstage. And I want to say that right now, we need Jesus to be front and center of our lives and our, our purpose in our communities and even as a nation that we need to honor him and give him a place in what we are facing. I'm very moved today with this message because um, <clears throat> maybe today this can be a moment where you realise everything can change. I want, to, I want to go to Luke chapter 7. And I'm going to just read some of this passage. And I, as I read, I want to talk to you about this because I find this to be a, a very challenging passage, but at the same time, I feel it very inspiring and I want to share it with you today. Luke chapter 7, reading from verse 11. And I'm reading from the New Living Testament, but translation, but you might have something, something different. But follow along with me. Luke chapter 7, verse 11. Soon afterwards, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain with a great crowd following him. 
Let me stop there because that place name, I, I, I just love you know, Bible names and places in the Bible because they always seem to have some kind of reference to something important in the story. Yeah, Nain itself, as a name, it means a pleasant place. It means a great place. It means a place of possibility. It means a place of potential. Yeah, can you imagine that? Jesus is coming to this place where you know, it's a great place to come. It's a place of possibility. It's a place of potential. And as he comes to this place, he's confronted with this situation. You know, I think up until this uh, uh, COVID-19 thing, every one of us could say, well, you know what? Australia was a great place to be. Well, it was a wonderful place to be. It was a place of potential. It was a place of promise. But as we read in the story, um, something had gone wrong. And maybe that's what's taking place even in life today for some people. Something's gone terribly wrong. As we read in this story, as Jesus comes to this place, as he tries to enter, something stops him. Something is coming out of that that city that day that causes him to stop. Let me read it to you in verses 12, what it says. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The boy who had died was the only son of a widow and many mourners from the village were with her, were with her. Let me just stop there because um, when you stop, think about this, this was the only son. It wasn't just a, a, a funeral procession, which, you know, we think, okay, funeral processions and funerals, they're sad, but this was really sad because this was the only son of a widowed woman. Now you think about this, life has already been hard. Life has already been unfair on this woman. She's already lost the husband she had. She's already lost the hope. She's already lost the one who could protect her and care for her. But now she's she's also losing the very thing that would give her hope for her, her future. And she's surrounded by people who, with her, are grief-stricken and broken. Can you just picture that that moment? Can you picture that? If the the only good thing about your life (coughs) was this son, and you've lost him, what have you got to live for? What have you got to have hope in? What a moment that your life might be in. But as, as we go to verse 13, we read on, it says... When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Don't cry. Oh, that just gets, that gets to my heart. That gets me so excited when I read that because the Lord saw her. Can you imagine that situation? Yeah, and all those, that crowd that would have been here, there would have been many people to see. There have been you know, situations and things that would have... But Jesus looked in and he saw her. I want to just say today that, you know what, you right now in this moment of life, you might think to yourself, nobody sees me. I want to tell you right now, my Bible tells me that Jesus sees you. He sees what's going on right now in this moment that your life's in. He sees the situation of your life and he cares today. And you might even right now, just as this woman did, she had a whole crowd of people who were actually pushing her along. It's like yeah, you, your life couldn't stop because it was like she was in this procession of life that was just on the move. And it was just overwhelming her. I want to say, you can always have a crowd of people in your life. You're always going to have a crowd of naysayers or a crowd of negative Nancys who are going to try to carry you off, you know, with all the things that are going to go wrong and all the things that are wrong and all the things that will never go right in your life. But in this moment, Jesus sees her. What does he do? He speaks to her and he says, don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Hey, listen, can I say that sometimes we need to actually be confronted? We need to, can you imagine Jesus saying that to this woman? Don't cry? What what, what have I got not to cry about? You know what Jesus says to her? Don't cry. I want to say that today that maybe you need to hear this. You need to hear that. Don't give up. 
Don't give in. Don't let go of what you have as a hope. Don't let go of those things that you've been believing for or you've determined in your heart. Don't give up on those things. Hey, listen, another thing I need to say is don't make dumb decisions. Don't, don't make choices that are wrong for you in your life just because things don't seem to be going where they, you, you thought they ought to go. Don't. Don't. In fact, you know, as you read through the Bible, there are many times the word uses, the Bible uses those phrases, don't or do not. In fact, you know, some, some Bible writers say that over 365 times in the Bible, you'll find reference to that phrase, do not, don't do this, do not do that. Why? Because maybe for every day of our lives, every day of the year, there is a moment where God is saying to us, don't let the world tell you what to think. Don't let the world shape your understanding. In fact, Romans 12 verse 2 says that. Don't just, don't let the world shape you in what, it, what you should have or what you should believe or what you should think don't let it happen maybe this moment that your life's in right now is actually the miracle moment for your life if you're willing to hear him above all the other voices that are trying to speak over your life right now and into your life right now there are many moments I can think of that uh, Helen and I have been in our life where we could have allowed worry and fear and anxiety to determine the moment of our life. But as we have just listened and allowed Jesus to speak into the situation, we've heard him stop us and say, stop, don't do that. Don't think negatively. Don't think uncertainty. Don't think fear. Don't think those things. Have hope. Have hope. And can I say that sometimes in those situations... The, the things that we do is we actually start to think to ourselves, or oh, maybe this is what God wanted me to have. Maybe God wants this to have this happen for me. Maybe I'm meant to be in this place of misery and heartache. Maybe God, you know, you know I, I deserve this. And, and so many Christians in their thinking have gone down that pathway, just like this woman. And, and Jesus had to step into that situation in that moment of her life and say, don't, stop it, stop it. The thing I love about this story is this. He not only stops her in this whole moment that her life has failed, but he speaks a God determination into her and he speaks a determination of a miracle. And listen, somebody watching this today, this message is for you. I sincerely believe that, that God is wanting to say to you today, Stop right now. Don't let fear tell you what to believe or what to think. Don't cry. Don't give up. Don't let go. This is your moment for a miracle. And notice as you go on in this story in verse 14, it says this. Then Jesus walked over to the coffin and he touched it and the bearers stopped. Can I say this? This... Yeah, it was the moment that Jesus put his hand on the situation that things stopped. Until the hand of God was on that moment, things were just going to continue on. Maybe right now for you, maybe there's a procession going on in your life right now of heartache, of failure, maybe even of cancer or this or that. And you're saying to yourself, you can hear that, that, that message, you can hear the word of faith, but you need to let the hand of God be put upon your situation right now for it, everything to come to a stop, to come to a stop. Maybe you're saying to yourself, well, I wish I could believe that, Pastor. I wish I could believe that. Yeah, if only I felt that I was important to God. If only I thought I mattered to God. Well, I want to say to you today, you do matter to God. In fact, John 3.16 tells me that. It says, for God so loved the world. For God so loved you and he loved every other individual on the face of this world that he stepped out of heaven and he stepped into this world to declare and to show the world uh, the, the evidence of God's love. That's how much you matter to him. And if he did that for you and he did that for me, you matter to him. You matter to him. This is your moment 
for a miracle. This is your moment for a miracle. You matter to God. God sees you. In fact, Second Chronicles 16 verse 9 says this, that the eyes of the Lord run, run to and fro throughout the whole world, yeah, that God is looking to show himself strong on behalf of. God is wanting to reach out. God is wanting to help those who would call upon him. God is wanting to intervene in the circumstances and the situations of life. God wants to be a part of the life and the situation your life is, is in right now. This is your moment for a miracle. Let me finish this story because as we go on in verses 14 to 16, it says this, Then Jesus walked over to the coffin, he touched it, and the bearers stopped. Young man, he said, get up. Then the dead boy sat up. What? Who was it? The dead boy. The boy who was dead sat up and he began to talk to those around him. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept across that crowd. And they praised God, saying, Oh, a mighty prophet is here among us, and we have seen the hand of God at work today. We have seen the hand of God at work today. Can you just picture that scene? Can you just picture that moment for that mother? Yeah, there, one minute she's crying, one minute she's overcome by grief, the next minute Jesus steps in, he says, woman, don't cry, he speaks to the boy, he causes the boy to come back to life, then great joy erupts on that scene. What a moment for a miracle. What a moment for a miracle. The moment that everything changes. And they saw the hand of God at work. Yeah, I want to pray right now. And I want to declare this moment of God's miracle right now over for some of you in your life and where you're at. You know, I, want, I want to believe with you right now because I certainly believe today this message has it needs to hit home to some people because you need to stop your thinking. You need to stop what life is telling you. You need to stop in that procession of fear and anxiety and you need to listen and let Jesus touch your life. Touch that lost hope. Touch that lost opportunity. Touch that lost situation and cause life to be spoken into it again. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that just like this widow woman, we matter to you. We are important to you. Today, we thank you that you came and died for us to prove how much you, we matter to our heavenly Father and that nothing escapes his gaze and his goodness. Lord Jesus, help us to be stopped and to hear above the noise of negativity and doom that you are declaring over us. Do not fear. Do not let our hearts be troubled. Do not be anxious for anything. Today, Lord, touch our lives. Let the hand of God be upon this moment of our life right now, over our families. Let the hand of God be upon our families. Let the hand of God be upon our jobs. Let the hand of God be upon our marriages. Let the hand of God be upon our health, we pray. Our opportunities, we pray. Our futures, we pray. Thank you for the miracles of this moment we are going to hear about. Amen. Amen. Hey, church. Thank you for listening to this short message today. And we'd love to hear back from you of what God is doing in your moment, miracle moment right now. I'm expecting to hear stories of miracles from all kinds of places and all kinds of situations. I'm believing for restored hope and favour and a new day of rejoicing along with you. Amen. May God bless you. Hey, God bless you. God keep you. God, watch over you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.